Hi, everybody. It's me, Foxy D. Okay, maybe I didn't Foxify all the way, but I tried, did my best. So last video, we talked a little bit about who the bystanders were, and I have been a bystander myself. So not a pleasant experience for me. Probably worse than actually being mobbed. Maybe, maybe not. Being mobbed was pretty bad. So I kind of understand why I did the bystander thing. Now, there's two ways the bystander thing could go. One is just this kind of passive neutrality, cowardly. And the other one is probably worse. That's jumping on the bandwagon with the mobbers. So oftentimes, people who are bystanders will turn into mobbers themselves, okay? Or they'll aid and abet the mobber, mostly knowingly, sometimes unknowingly. In my last experience, I worked with a couple of um, people. It was men that just seemed totally clueless about what was going on, and they jumped on the bandwagon. A couple of them did know what was going on, but that's besides the point. Okay? The women, however, and here we go, and how can I talk about gender? I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to be honest about it, too. The women, their passive, aggressive behaviors, to me, were... Um, not only expected, if you will, because it's happened to me before, like I said, um, ugly, just very ugly behavior. One woman in particular would try to, it's going to sound so baby what I'm going to say, what hair color do you use? I had a different hair color. And so I told her, I was very open about it, just the color. Oh, I love it. I love it. She went and she got the same hair color that I did. I'm like, okay, whatever, big deal. Same woman was like, Where, where'd you get your top? What brand is that? So I was open. I told her. And all of a sudden, she starts dressing like me with the same hair color. And it was just really bizarre. Okay. Other than that, there wasn't much going on between us. It was just very awkward. I got a bad vibe from her. And there was a reason for that. <clears throat> she uh, jumped on the bandwagon along with the mobbers and one of her friends. And her friend was a union member. Okay. And her friend was just like would point at me literally go look at her she's so cute with all the expressions oh my god i wanted to slap her really bad um I slap the ugly right out of her but that would have been impossible <laughs> sorry i couldn't resist but it it is what it is i mean really uh, just nasty nasty so what happens is when you get plebs people that are in low level position okay uh frustrated angry a lot of women my age, I'm sorry, I'm going to call it like I see it, and I have a lot of hate mail, and that's okay too, because I'm going to tell the truth, are not happy, okay? The joy in their eyes is gone. They're not too happy. God knows. I mean, you know, finances are rough for everybody. Uh, you know, I have problems too. Don't get me wrong. Look what I've been through, for Christ's sakes. Um, so, you know, I understand how people sometimes lose that joy inside of them. Okay, not everybody can be five years old in their heart and soul, irrespective as to what happens to them. But, so I get it. So that anger, it reminded me a little bit of the Roman Colosseum. You get all the plebs that are there. It's like bread and circuses. They get together and they love to watch a good fight when somebody's getting bludgeoned to death, you know, full of blood and gore. So that's what I like in a, a mobbing too. Now, the bystander who turns into that kind of nasty animal, Believe me, I'm not saying turn the other cheek or that they're just well-meaning people. and You know, there's the weakness of the human psyche brings them there. They're bad people. They're just nasty. They're nasty and angry and they have to try to take it out on someone else. Simple as that. Don't take it personally or try not to. It's them. It's not you. You, you sparkly animal. Okay. <laughs> if you're anything like me, um, my suggestion to... Um, to avoid a mobbing, number one, if you feel that the workplace doesn't jive with your character, with your values, morals, or your own personal integrity, don't take the job. Two, if you can't help but take the job because you really need the money, take the job, but actively seek employment elsewhere. Don't settle. Okay. Um, three, three I don't recommend. Three is put yourself in a box, hold your breath. And, you know, just freaking put yourself in a box and don't be so sparkly. Don't make other people uncomfortable. 
I wouldn't recommend that. Like I said, I did that for a number of years within this organization. It wasn't for me. And I knew it wasn't for me very early on. But the money was better than a lot of places for Schlepper type work. And the job was pretty secure. So I sold out. But it really wasn't worth it in the end. No, no amount of, and even I, I could say no amount of money. If I was making a six-figure salary, at least I could say to myself, well, there was a reason you sold out. But there was no reason. The money wasn't good. It just wasn't good at all. You know, and in the end, by the time you pay all your stuff, it's not like you have a ton of savings or something. And, you know, it made holding your breath and putting yourself in a box worthwhile. Nothing's worth that. Okay, but I digress. So, you know, kind of touching on who the bystanders are. They could be just well-meaning cowards or not even well-meaning, but they could be frightened cowards or they could be nasty cowards. And they're, they're each not good. You don't want to be a bystander. Okay, uh, trust me, it's an ugly feeling. But then again, if you're going to stand up for the um, for the mobber, you have to do it in a particular way. We will get there. Okay. Now, who are the mobbers? Typically, the mobbers are people in higher level positions, like the masterminds behind the whole thing, or sometimes it could be a colleague. It's someone who's extremely jealous of you. It's as simple as that. I know it sounds so simplistic, but that is the truth. Jealous, like I said, in my case, it was of my courage, my upfront nature of speaking my mind. My direct boss, a man, was, and I smelled his cowardice, and I tried to help him. I never told him you're a coward, but he would come to seek advice, like, uh, the other guy is vying for the same position as me. He asked me to show, he had asked me for advice one time, okay, he had a competitor, Another guy was at the same level as him who said, well, where I used to work, people wouldn't share information. Um, but, you know, maybe you can show me your CV. Because he knew that this guy was, you know, had made the ranks and had been there longer than him. But still, they were vying for the same position. So this turkey says, okay, I'll show you. Then he comes to me and says, what should I do? So I said, well, tell him you spoke to your wife, okay, and that your wife said she thinks it's a bad idea. Like, just deflect. Don't try not to put yourself in that position, okay? Um, things like that. It was just really bizarre. And, you know, in any case, but he would ask me this kind of stuff and advice, or he would point out, like, say, I'd be polite to this other colleague who was just a nasty man, it's true, the guy who asked him for his CV. Uh, but I was always polite with him. I'd say hello, goodbye, never engaged in a heavy conversation, and he would call me on that. Like, you know, I thought you didn't like him. And I'd be like, I can't stand him, but I've got to work with the guy. So, you know, it's not like I'm going to be mean to people directly. I was always very polite, but I kept my distance from certain people. But this boss of mine, right, that I couldn't help but work with him, he was one of the ringleaders to throw me under the bus <clears throat> after I'd helped him. It's crazy. It's, it's really bizarre, but that's what he did. Um, he would actually also regarding my work, because I did a very good job. And they were counting the number of files we did, and I did more files than a number of my colleagues. I was one of the top two. Uh, he was trying, he was starting to give me files that were not on the roster, that weren't counted. He's like, oh, so-and-so couldn't do this file because it's in French. Uh, but he started it. So it means that the other colleague would get a tick or a check mark uh, for having done that file. I would do all the work and I wouldn't get credit for it, right? And in my own naivete at the time, I didn't even realize he was doing this to me, right? Because to me, it was this guy who would always ask me for advice and, you know, I did well and even gave me this letter of recommendation. So I thought we were cool, but we weren't cool, all right? In the end, believe it or not, uh, right before I decided that it was the end for me, he had come in my office and he said, you know, I was listening to a song that reminded me of you. And I said, really? I go, what song? Somebody had told me once, 99 Red Balloons. And I said, yeah, I think so. Uh, and he said, I Am the Sky by Alan Parsons. Right? And I go, oh, okay, I'll check it out. And I did. And I was like, well, that's, those lyrics really don't apply to me. So I told him the next day. I said, that's kind of weird. I said, I don't think that applies to me. He goes, no, it could be taken in one of two ways. And I said, what a weird thing to say. 
Okay. And that is the very day that he told me, because I had fought back my marbles. I put him in the place of when I couldn't get away with too much this last time. And he said, all you had to do was not touch their egos and everything would have been fine. And he said uh, something to the effect of, Remember Philip Zimbardo and the Stanford prison experiment? Well, if you stick around here, I have a feeling it's going to be something like that. I went into full-blown panic mode, and that was the last day that I worked at this job. Anyhow, getting back to who the mobbers are, typically they're levels, they're people in management that can't manage, that don't know how to manage. All right. Um, so... In a nutshell, you'll get bad managers, passive-aggressive managers, insecure people, uh, people without integrity. In those kind of workplaces, mobbing happens, and it happens quite often. Uh, the more I'm looking around, the more I'm seeing it is not a phenomenon that's just particular to North America. I was mistaken when I said that, or Northern Europe. It is growing globally in leaps and bounds, unfortunately. It's almost as though the more this corporate plutocracy uh, grows, the harder it is for the little people to make money, and they become way more competitive, even over these silly little jobs, sadly. So next video, we're going to talk about more in particular about how to avoid mobbing, all right, and what to do if you suspect you're being mobbed. One word to the wise. The sooner that you recognize that you're being mobbed, the better your chances are of getting out of this ugly situation. Wish you a great day. Namaste.